Okay, let's start. The architecture pack and all the assets that I'm using are available for free on my Gumbroth. You just need to download it. What I did here is I used an array modifier and increased count. We can also use a simple deform modifier using bend on the z-axis. In case it doesn't work, we can add an empty and we can use the empty as the origin. And now set the angle, for example, 360 degrees. Now, if you go into edit mode, you can see the topology. That's why I made it that way, in case I need to bend the mesh. Maybe we can add some loop cuts with control R. Now we can add a new array modifier, but this time on the z-axis, an increased count to create a building. Now the textures that I'm using for the floor are from polyheaven.com. You can find many textures here for free. And now let's see how to add the trees. The easiest way is to use an add-on. I like to use Bagapai. To install it in Blender 4.4, go to Preferences, Get Extensions, Find Bagapai, then click on Install. So let's add a plane and I recommend to subdivide it. Make sure to apply the scale and rotation of the plane and the objects that you want to scatter. And now select the tree, shift, select the plane, then press J and scatter paint. We can change the fall off to smooth. And we can subtract by changing the weight. Now we can also use scatter to add the trees all over the place. Press N. We can make some adjustments like the density, the minimum distance, the scale, and of course we can randomize the rotation. For faster viewport, we can use proxies. Simply hit proxy. Of course, you can scatter the trees on any object. Select the tree, shift, select the object, then press J. If you don't want to use an add-on to scatter the trees, let's see how to do it with geometry nodes. Basically, it's a distribute points on faces connected to an instance on points. If you want to see the plane, you can use a join geometry and connect geometry. Now, all you need to do is drag the collection with the trees or objects you want to scatter. So you need to send the object or objects to a collection, select the objects, press M and send it to any collection or a new collection. Now connect the collection to instance and make sure to enable pick instance. Also separate children and reset children. To randomize the scale, I used a random value node. 
and the same for rotation a random value but change to vector and now we can randomize the rotation we can adjust the density but I'm gonna change to Poussin disk so now we can adjust the minimum distance between objects now um, let me add a grid node connect into mesh and now we can change the size and increase the vertices And now you can use uh, this plane in your scenes. And now to prevent the viewport from slowing down in render properties, we can enable simplify. And here we can limit the subdivision levels, the particles and texture limit. I set it to 1K but this is only for the viewport in render make sure there's no limit for the mountains i use a high map that i made with gaia and i scatter some trees but we can also use the landscape add-on to enable it go to preferences get extensions and look for landscape install it and make sure to enable it in add-ons save the preferences now shift a landscape open the window here we can choose from some presets and adjust the properties here so you can create your terrain I have a tutorial where I explain it. I also explained how to texture it. You can find the link in the description below. Now, in the architecture pack, I have included a brick material in case you need to use it for new objects. Simply drag and drop. Now in the shader editor, you can repeat the texture. I'm using the asset browser. If you don't know how to use it, I have a tutorial on my channel. For the water material, you can use my add-on, it's free. Simply hit Add Water Cube and scale it down. And you can customize it in material properties. But if you want to make your own shader, I have a separate video where I explained how to make it. Now, this is an image with transparent background. I made it with Photoshop using a water splash brush and save it in PNG. Uh, you can see the notes here. Simply connect the alpha to alpha in the shader. And for the lighting in world properties, of course, we can use a nice DRI, but I prefer to use the sky texture. Simply rotate the sun and maybe play around with elevation. But of course, the sky doesn't look good, so we can replace it. Let's open the shader editor. Change to world. Shift D to duplicate the background. And mix them with a mix shader. Now select the background and control T 
and here we can select an HDRI. I'm gonna select this one, Golden Gate Hills. You can also find it at polyheaven.com and make sure to connect the HDRI below. Now add a light pad and connect into Factor. You can adjust the strength of the light or the background. Now let's rotate the background on the C-axis until you find something that you like. To make it look more alive, we can add people to the scene. I'm using characters from this website but you can use the models you want. Simply hit download and I'm using geometry nodes to scatter the characters. As you can see these are the same nodes that I use with the trees so you can use the same. Of course, the scale of the characters is very important. I use the windows of these buildings as reference. Try to match the scale because these windows are bigger as you can see in my reference image. Now we can add an atmosphere. Let's add a cube and scale it up. Make sure to cover all the scene if you can see the scene, open the end panel and go to view, increase end value until you can see it. For the cube in object properties, under viewport, we can set it to wire or bounce to make it transparent. Now add the material, delete the shader and connect a volume scatter into volume. I'm going to change to ready. And now I can uh, lower uh, density until I can see it. We can add more shadows to the scene. So let's add a plane and scale it up and apply the scale. Now add a material and add a noise texture. Connect it into alpha. We can adjust the scale in detail. Now add a color ramp and simply move the black color to the right. Okay, so now let's see how it looks. We are projecting the shadows to the scene like clouds. And you can play around with the color ramp. And finally, for the final render, I use the noise and set the render samples. And that's it. See you next time.